sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with flashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can bear. Thank
Lift your hands up to the Lord. Lift your hands up to the Lord. You'll always be holy. You'll always be. You'll always be. Always be. I want to share something. As I was praying down there, the Lord prompted something in my heart. There were two people in this congregation. One was not a part of our congregation, became a part of the congregation, and the other was in the congregation. Both were on life support at the Monash ICU. When the Lord took me there, in the natural, there was no hope. Please keep standing. In the natural, there was no hope. One person's life support was turned off. The other person's life support was going to be turned, going to be turned off. At that moment, I prayed in the name of Jesus for healing. And both of them came back to life. And both are here in our midst today. Jeremy, can you come up, Jeremy? Jeremy, come up. Yeah, look at that photograph there. That's someone you know. That's not Jeremy. I have Jeremy's photograph also, but I didn't bring it today. But that's Pastor John. Come on, come on, Jeremy. Pastor John, come here. Jeremy was worse than that photograph. Jeremy's photograph was really bad. But in the hopeless situation, when there's no hope, Jesus gives us hope. And I rebuked the doctor's words and I commanded healing in Jesus' name. And today we are both standing here by the name of the Lord. Now, when I was kneeling and praying, worshiping the Lord, I had the prompting, those of you who need healing, would you come up? I'm going to get the two of them to pray for you. Lay hands and pray for you for healing. They have seen the greatest miracle of life given to them through death. If you need healing, put your hand up. Those who need healing touch. Well, come, 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 come up to the front. Come up. Come and stand here.
Stuart, Chris, Peter, can I come up and stand behind the people? Stand behind the people.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, baby, seated. Pastor John, come and share the word. Put your hands with Pastor John. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Amen. Can you relax a little bit? Just absorb the, the worship, the glory of God that you set into your heart now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Rabbi Shada, 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 Shada. Amen. Are we all relaxed? You need, you need to be relaxed to receive. Amen? Is the Holy Spirit going to speak to you, not me? Amen? Today I think the message is a bit, can I say, controversial. Actually, it's not. It's the Word of God. I'm going to give you exactly what the Word of God says. Amen? So don't blame me if I... Uh, you have some reservations? Okay? Just relax. Let the Holy Spirit in you. Because it's the Word of God, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, and He's there to help you in your heart. Hallelujah. You know what the subject is? <laughs> Ties and offerings. Amen? Tithes and offerings. And it is a blessing. God wants to bless all of you. God is a blesser. Amen? All good things come from heaven, from God to you, to his children, to his sons and daughters. Just, just be ready to receive. I just have a... This, this is a hard thing to say. This is what God is saying. It's the word of God. Amen? Malachi 3.8, who knows what it is? Can we have it on, on the screen? Will a man rob God? <laughs> Will a man rob God? Will you rob God? Will I rob God? No. No. Say no. Yet you have robbed me, but you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. I mean, God is telling tell us something. This end days. We need to do exactly what God wants us to do according to the word of God so that he can bless us. You know, God is a blesser, like I say. And sometimes we don't receive things. We pray and pray and pray and pray. Nothing happens. Just do what, go to the word. And this is one of the words that the Lord is speaking to us. Amen? Okay, what is a tithe? To tithe or not to tithe? You know? To tithe or not to tithe? Gross or net? Where do you tithe? Is it gross or net? Okay? Is it the old covenant or the new covenant? Yeah, we'll go through this. Some of this. I'm trying not to uh, read. Huh? I got to, uh, to time myself. Okay, like anything else, God looks at the heart. Amen. Heart. Our relationship with God is with the heart, from our spirit, not our mind, not our issues in our lives. One who puts a tie in the bucket in a grudging manner and out of obligation is no better than the one who fights tooth and nail against giving God anything at all. Right? 
If you want to live in the benefits of a tither, you have got to first become a real tither. You must be really doing it out of your heart. One who gives continually year after year, no matter the circumstances, with a tither's heart. You still okay? Huh? I don't be rough on you. I, I just want to give you the word of God. Because the same word works on me. Amen? Okay, the first thing is, on to says is, tithers are blessed. We always sing, God bless you, God, God is a blesser. He wants to bless you. He, he never holds back anything from you. He wants to, but sometimes he cannot. He cannot. Not because of him, because of us. Our excuses. The Bible is full of benefits, rights and privileges for tithers. You don't want to miss any of them. Okay? Tithing is an act of honor and worship. You honor him, you worship him. Romans 12 says, You present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him. It is a worship service to him, to worship him, to offer yourself. You can offer yourself all you want, but if you don't tithe, you are holding back something from him. Amen? It is protection against the devourer. The devil's work is, is simple. He just wants to... <laughs> what God bless, he will take away. And he will make sure that you are not blessed. Because he doesn't want you to be blessed. Because anything God does, he's come against. God's a blesser, he's a curser. All right? And this is to prove God. Only one scripture, or one of the few that says, God said, prove me. Try me, prove me. Right? And it's blessings, I know, it's prosperity. It's all about uh, God's goodness. And it's a covenant connection. Tithing be didn't begin with the law or in the New Testament. Tithing be begins in Genesis 4, 2 to 4. Can I go there? Before the law was ever given to Moses, Abel and Cain brought the first fruits of their labor to God. It's right from the beginning, from Adam. Genesis 14, 18 to 20 says, And Melchizedek, king of Salem. Who knows who's Melchizedek? Okay, very few. There's a lot of places in the Bible, in Hebrews, in Genesis, talks about Melchizedek. He's a king and a priest. Jesus is after the order of Melchizedek, okay? Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, that's communion, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Ad Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered thy enemies unto thy hand, and gave him tithes of all. God wants to prosper you. And when He prosper you, you just give back. It, it, is, it is not a law those days. You just, you just want to honor God. You want to honor Him. He wants to bless God back. He didn't give, give all to God. He didn't give 90% to God, but He gave 10% to God. How do you lie? But God says, give me 90%. You keep 10%. Hmm? And even if you say that, you do it. Because with 10%, you can, you are blessed too. You can do more. But God says, okay, just 10% of tithe. All right? And I'll go through the scriptures and then, the, then we'll see. Genesis 8, uh, 22 says, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, Cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. That means it's a law. 
is not a natural law, it's also a spiritual law. And so is tithing. It's a spiritual law. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. The man give unto you. So he just wants to bless you. Everywhere in the scripture, he just wants to bless you. He wants you to prosper. And if a Christian is not prospering, if something is wrong because God has everything to bless us and we are to receive. Unless we say, no, 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 no. I want to be poor. I want to be, you know, just like a, the monks <laughs> going around. I think those who live in, in Asian countries know the monks. They, they, they take a bowl and go house to house, ask for food. No, 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 we are better than that. We are above and not below, amen? Okay, we, we, we talk about the tithe. The tithe is the first 10%. It, in Deuteronomy 14.22 says, You shall tithe all the yield of your seed that comes from the field year by year. The 10% is on your... Let's say you put seed in the ground and then the harvest time comes, you take the harvest, the harvest, first 10, first 10%, first one-tenth of it, give to God. Now we are not putting seed on the ground, but we put seed in the jobs that we do, the business that we do, and then when we produce a yield, we give a tenth back to God. And you say, gross or net or what, what, do, you, what, 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 what do, do you want? Do you want, the Bible says, you will get a return of 30, 60, 100 fold. So you want to get a, a 100 fold of a little amount less or a big amount. It, your choice. Actually, it is not a law now. Jesus has fulfilled the law, okay? So we are doing by faith. We are doing it by our love for God, for Him. I'll go to some of the scriptures. So it's the... It's the, it's the the first ten, the best part of it. Okay, this is the first ten percent of gross before any expenses, obligation, taxes, and all that. Actually, you choose. Amen. Like I say, you choose. Net or gross. I mean, we all learn from very young that, that we have a business we run. We don't, do, we don't calculate all the... the we've got to pay the rent, we've got to pay this, this. Whatever you get, just give. And more, okay? It's tithes and offerings. 10% plus, plus. So the more you give, the more you receive. Amen? God wants to bless you. Proverbs 3 9 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. All the prophets. The dictionary defines first fruit as the first agricultural produce of a season, especially when given as an offering to God. Okay, there are some scriptures here, I'm not going through all of them. Okay, there's something spiritually significant about giving God your first and best. It is spiritual, like I say, it's a spiritual law, rather than the leftovers. In Malachi 6, uh, Malachi 1, 6 to 12, some of the priests in, at the temple got a bright idea. Instead of offering un, unblemished animals as sacrifices to the Lord, the Lord wants the best, okay? Without spot or wrinkle. A, a lamb that's one year old, that is best. Instead of offering unblemished animals as sacrifices to the Lord, they decided to make the sacrificing more convenient and cost effective. It's the same happening now in the church. So they began encouraging people to give their blind and lame animals to God. Is that honoring God? Instead of the best of the bunch, the priests were giving God the leftovers instead of the first and best. In response, God said, where is my honor? Where is my reverence? He viewed this as dishonoring him, and it was. 
I mean, you have some little bit up here, you'll know that it is not right. Amen? God deserves the best because he gave the best for us. Jesus, no sin, nothing, perfect, God himself with us. Yeah, when God gave his first and only begotten son as sacrifice for our sins, he gave his first and best, he deserves nothing less than the same from us. I think the problem is uh, the spirit of fear. Amen? I would say, you can follow the declare over me. God has not given the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. He has given us that so that we can live by that. Okay? We, if we don't live by that, we have to live the alternative way with the spirit of fear. Fear that I don't have enough. Fear that I cannot pay my the bills. Fear that I have no food on the table. Fear this, fear that, fear that. Cancel the fear. God has not given it to you. If God hasn't given it to you, the devil is the one who gives to you. Alright? The devil wants to destroy you, destroy me, destroy the, the church. Number two. Point number two. Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. The things that are God. So all that we have belongs to him. So give back to him. Understand that the tithe belongs to God. All in Leviticus 27, 30 says, And all the tithe of the land, whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's, it is holy unto the Lord. Everything that comes out of the ground, everything that you, 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 you earn, it comes from the Lord. Origin, origin is the Lord. Not giving your money to a pastor or to a church, you're giving to God. Remember that? When you're tied. But if you think, oh, the church is not using my money. Don't say mine. When you give, it's his. It belongs to God. God, God is the one who will manage it. If you find that the church or the pastor or anyone that, uh, you know, the, the temple or whatever, if you have doubts, get out from there. Go somewhere. There you can find a perfect per church. And when you find the church, perfect church, you go there, the church becomes imperfect. Amen? <laughs> Alright? So don't try. You pray, the Lord leads you to go there and there. If it's not perfect, you do your part, you are a Prayer, you are the prayer, you pray, you are praying a person. We are supposed to pray for our pastors, our leaders, anything who are in the authority. Alright? So if something is wrong, it's not anything else but us, blame us first. Point number three, we present our tithes to Jesus. Hebrews 7, 8 says, here mortal men receive tithes, but there he, Jesus, receives them, of whom it is witness that he lives. Do you believe Jesus lives? He's alive? Give to him. Here Jesus is a high priest. We present our tithes to him. We do honor and worship him when we give to our Lord and Savior. We always want to worship him, praise him, sing all sorts of songs and all that. And when it comes to this little thing, this, this is the simplest of all to do. What you receive, just give one tenth. Plus, plus, whatever you want. You want to be blessed. Simple. This is worship. This is praise. This is glorify him. This is acknowledge him. Honor him. I'm not speaking to anyone, okay? So whatever you need to receive, receive from the word of God. All right? We give our tithes in faith. Why faith? Because you're born of faith. How do you know you're saved? 
How do you know when you die, you go to heaven? By faith. So by faith, do this. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Give by faith, not by fear. Okay? Fear that you won't have enough left over. Fear that you won't be able to make ends meet. Fear that you won't get a return. All right? Don't, don't test God. Uh, you, you are giving, like you say, continuously without any, any excuse or whatever. But if you are not tithing and you are giving to God, they say, Lord, I'm going to give, give you for a month or for a year. I want to see how I get back the result, the harvest. Don't test God. God's word is true. All right? If you with that attitude, you won't get anything back. In fact, the devil will steal from you more. <laughs> that we should declare over our tithe. That God will open the windows of heaven over your life. It's Malachi 10. I'm going to read the rest of it later on. Malachi 3, 11 says, He will rebuild the devourer for your sake. All right? God will do it. He will de- rebuild the... De- who's the devourer? Who's the devourer? The devil. Satan. He wants to steal from you. Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He starts with stealing. And then he kills you. And then he destroys your life. Your family, everything, your, your whatever. So remember, God gives you life. So we must know how to receive that life. He can give you all we want. In fact, every spiritual blessing in heaven is yours when you're born again. All right? But how much do we have to receive? Something is not right. God's word is true. He shall not return the void. All right? And he's a blesser. Everything about God is good, 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 and good. So we got to do our part. Okay, I read the scripture. Malachi 3, 10, 12. Bring ye all the tithes to the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, his house, okay? And prove me now herewith. Test him, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven. Why windows of heaven? Because all the spiritual blessings is in heaven. It's waiting to be poured down. And pour you out a blessing that there shall, be, there shall not be room enough to receive it. Why? Why does he want to give us so much? We can spend so much on it. You can live, enjoy our life so much. But he wants to bless others too. God is a blesser, okay? So you, you are the point where he can use to bless others. Verse 11, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. What's the host? It's the host of angels. God has assigned his angels in your life to bless you. You do the right thing. God says, okay, go. Go, go, give, give, give. Protect. Save. Whatever. Amen? He's got a host of angels ready, waiting to hear his voice, to hear his command, to bless so if you find that something is not quite right, just go to the word, go to him. Ask, Lord, where have I missed it? In tithes and offerings? Did I rob you? Prove me. God says. I just say, okay, yeah? Okay, it's the word. It's still the word of God, okay? I dare not preach anything that is not the word of God. All right? So I'm quite safe when I speak the word of God. And all nations shall call you blessed. Do you like that? 
to everybody. Nations mean ethnicity, everyone around. Everyone look at you. Oh, you're blessed, you're blessed. Why, how come you're blessed? For you shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Oh, God is so good. Amen? God is good. All the time. God is always good. Okay. The fifth point I want to bring up is, tithing protects the other 90%. Amen? You read the scripture, all this. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes that he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. I hear a lot of people say, I'm just living, I mean, uh, for ends to meet. Enough for, you know, for me to, just to survive. You are the son of the most high God. You should not be living that way. Okay? That is, that is for Gentiles. They live by the ends. You meet the ends. Whatever they earn, will just, not, only, not enough, but be stolen by the enemy as well. <laughs> Give God what is his, and he will protect what is yours. Alright, remember this? Give God what is his, and God will protect what is yours. 10% belongs to him. You see, when you give 10% as tithes, you're giving to God. Don't calculate the, 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 the amount that you give to charity, to this, to that, to help somebody, to pay, pay what we call a mortgage for somebody else, house or car, or whatever. There is no a tithe. A tithe is a 10% to God. And how do you give it? The house of God. Amen? So some people will calculate, okay, I give this, 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 I add up, oh, more than 10%. It's okay with me. No, the devil sees it. It's not a word of God. The devil comes to you. All right? Don't, don't, don't be deceived. The devil is good at that. Give God what is his and he will protect what is yours. As you honor God with the 10% that belongs to him, he'll get involved with the rest. The other 90% will go further than ever before because you have got the supernatural power of God, in, of God involved in your finances. God get in, involved in your finances. The tithe from your income belongs to God and it lays the foundation for your financial success and abundance. What did, what did Jesus say? He came to give us life and life more abundantly. He just did, didn't, didn't come to save you and for you to go through all this garbage and go to heaven. He wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing. Because he came to bless, now we, it's our turn to bless because we are in place of Jesus. Jesus came. He made us kings and priests. He, he made us to be in his position all over the world. All right, so that we can be in, in touch with everyone on this earth, can know about Jesus, can receive Jesus. There is a protection plan that's attached to the tithe. Everything we have is protected: our finances, our home, our goods. All right, this, this is a covenant thing, covenant God with us. Okay, when you have a covenant. Uh, let's say there's uh, the two groups of people in, in, the, in the nation or whatever. One group is a farm, farmer, okay? He, he farm, he, he rear animals and all. But he doesn't know how to fight. But there's another group who are warriors. They know how to fight, okay? If they make covenant, the warrior group will protect the farmers. And the farmer will feed, will give them. It's a covenant, all right? So God has a covenant with us. God is a protector. He can protect us. All right? So we don't have to worry about, you know, learning how to be a warrior to protect our own. That, that's the world is doing. They protect their, their own. They, they, they try to, you know, to protect, to, 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 
to support themselves and whatever. But we have our God. We just honor Him and He does the rest. Still okay? Okay, point number six. All nations are called blessed. Okay, point number six. God created the tithes for our benefit. He, he puts that <laughs> there for our benefit. Honor the Lord with your substance, so shall your barns be filled with plenty. With plenty. He doesn't want your barns to be filled, but filled with overflowing. So like I say, you can be a blessing. Every time you give tithe or so, present your tithe to the Lord with honor. You honor him. You tell him, Lord, this is my, my tithe. This is, this is, this is my, my, I do my part. I know that you will do your part. Tithing is the most fundamental, foundational part of prosperity. Who wants to be prosperous? That's where it begins. God reinvests back into us for our benefit. The tithe protects the harvest. You can't sow unless you are tithing. Okay? So first, there we go, tithe and offering. Give your tithe first. Before you can sow. If you don't tithe and you sow, the devil come and steal. You know the sow? You want to sow? Some on the wayside, on the rocks, on the, what do you call, where, where there are weeds, not weeds, what do you call? No. What? Yeah, full of weeds. What is it called? In, on the rocks, no, on the on the pathway, on the rocks, and in the. Huh? Okay, okay. What the word says? A lot of thorns and all that. Among thorns, okay, you will, the thorns will just strangle your 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 plants, your weed, your, your fruit trees, or whatever. Okay, on good ground. Okay? You cannot sow unless you are tithing, okay? That's what I can say. You sow, 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 you cut them, 11%, 12%, okay, I'm happy, I've done my part. No. Give your 10%, 10% first, and then you keep on sowing. Tithing, number seven. Tithing is the only area God says, prove me. It's all part of the Malachi that I just read. Prove me now here with, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Like I say, he wants to bless you the overflowing. Huh? My cup runs over. Okay? <laughs> Everything that God does runs over in your life. But you must allow him to do it in your life. If you don't allow it, God says I can't do anything. I give you a will. Point number eight. Tithing is a covenant connection. You see, this tithing, I say, before, before Abraham, before Moses, before the law, even before Jesus, okay? We, Galatians 3, 29 says, And you shall be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and as according to the promise. So Abraham was before the law, was before Jesus. Abraham gave a tithe to Melchizedek before the law, before the gospel. All right? So it is from the very beginning. When God created Adam and Eve, Adam's part to what God has given it to he, he is to replenish. What is he? he takes care of his garden. He, he sows. He sows. Huh? That's a part of tithing. He does, I mean, God has given you everything. What you have to do is, the, the, like I say, if, if you work, the profit that you get, just give back a, a tithe of it, a, ten, a tenth of it, a ten percent of it. All right? You see, this is very interesting. Before I become a Christian, before then, I, I hear all these things. And it is one of the reasons that uh, the devil is working to prevent non-believers to accept Jesus. And he will ask, 
Is there a 10% church? Are you joining a 10% church? You heard that? A 10% church. Yeah. And it should say, yes, it is a 10% church because it's the church of God. If the churches are not doing that, it is not, it's not, not following God's laws, not his word. Okay? 10% church. We are also 10% church because we, we, we honor God. We bless him. Now, where was I? So we are Abraham's seed. If you want to receive the blessing of Abraham, you do what Abraham did. Right? Refusing the tithe disconnects you from the covenant of blessing. Okay? Just, just receive that. Refusing to tithe disconnects you from the covenant of blessing. When you tithe, you give God the legal right to intervene in your financial affairs. You give him the legal right to do it. Because God is a legal God, okay? If God is not a legal God, he will destroy Satan just like that. Amen? Legally, he has got authority on this earth, in the world, not the kingdom of God, but in the kingdom of the world. Because he still got the legal authority. Okay? And when you accept Jesus, the Lord and Savior, we get out of that control of, from Satan into the kingdom of God. So God, Jesus is our Lord now. Amen? So we are protected. We are His. He protects His own. I think this will be the... must uh, renew our mind. Let the mind of Christ work in us so that we can understand the word of God. You give God the legal right to intervene in your financial affairs, to bless you richly, and to defend you against the destruction of the devil brings in your life. If you're not, uh, let's say, you get into trouble, and then you say, Lord, I'm a tither. Tell the devil straight in the face, I'm a tither. I'm, I am, a, what do you call? I have, I, what do you call? I have the legal right to the legal right of God to do stuff in my life. So when you tithe, you have the legal right to tell the devil and to remind God what your word says. Amen? I think it takes some time for this to get into soak into our spirit, our mind especially. Okay. Well. Okay, now, now we have the, 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 the basics, the principles, uh, what God says and all that. Now, in, in, our, in our life as believers, okay, I know you have your res- reservations, this and that, your mindset on different, different how you take this. But when you give, be a cheerful giver. You always see it here, see, when you take tithes and offerings. Pastor Yvonne will know. Okay, this one, you mentioned that. Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 8 says, But this I say, he which soweth, or, or, you see, we don't, the New Testament doesn't say much about tithing. No. It is not a law, it's a covenant. A covenant is, is up to you. you. You follow the covenant, you are under the blessing of the covenant. You break the covenant, you are under the curse. That's it. So it's not a law that you must do it. All right? And in the, when the New Testament says so, like I say, you must tie it first before you can sow. All right? It's just like it gives you the... What was the word says? Uh, it gives you the, not the opportunity, it is the, the legal right to do it. If you want to sow into, I, we have been sowing, before we have become Christians, we have been sowing to the temples and this and that, to good causes, charities. You know? we, are, we, are, we, are, we are sowing. 
But that comes to not because we are not tithers, because we are not believers, you cannot tithe. So when you tithe, then your sowing makes a big difference. All right? The angels will, will see to it. Because God is the Lord of hosts. He sent his angels. And he is not telling the angel, Do you hear this? this? The angels hearken the voice of the Lord. When we speak the word of God, we are speaking his word. The angels hear, oh yes, sir, I'm going to do that. Amen? These are basic principles, okay? Sometimes we don't see it because it's in the spiritual realm, we don't see it. But angels hearken unto the voice of God. That means hearken unto God's word. When we speak God's word, so like I say, oh, you got trouble, say, Lord, I declare that I'm a tither. The devil hears it. Then he bury it back off. All right? Until you open your mouth even bigger. Declare the word of God. So if you sow sparingly or you, you, you don't tithe, you, you know what I mean? It doesn't use the word tithing in, in the New Testament. All right? Because it's left to you. It's a covenant. You choose. You choose life, you choose death. You choose blessing, you choose cursing. All right? Okay. He which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Means you will give 5% instead of 10%. I, I will give more than 10%. Why? In case I miss it. In case I miscalculate. Okay? I make sure my tithe goes in before I can give more. And he which sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man according to as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you. Don't you like grace? You are saved by grace. Anything you are, you are in trouble, by His grace, they can be set free. They can be blessed. God is able to make all grace abound to you that ye always having, having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Like I say, we are ambassadors for Christ. We represent Him. If you don't have, you cannot give. That's why the devil is trying to prevent us from having what God says is ours. So when we have, we can be a blessing, okay? If you're always sick, how can you pray for someone? It's so difficult to pray for someone. You can, you still can pray. But you receive the blessing of health so that you can, can, can feel how, how good it is to be healthy. Amen? Not to be sick, not to be this and that. Okay? Health belongs to us anyway. Healing is all in all of you. The love of God, the life of God, the light of God, the power of God, the Holy Spirit is all in you. Release it. Believe it, release it. Be not weary in well-doing. I'll end with this. Galatians 6, 7 to 9. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. That's what Jesus came to give us. Eternal life, everlasting life, Zoe life, life to the max. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due time, in due season, we shall reap. We faint not. God is such a blesser. He just wants to bless you. That's why he gives us the word so that we can follow his word, so that we can speak his word, so that we declare his word, so that we can be blessed. Amen? The seed is in here. 
The word of God is in here. If you if you do not know any uh, know much about anything or whatever, go to this word. All right. As a believer, every believer must read from Genesis chapter one one to Revelation chapter twenty two. 22, 20, 20, something like that, your last verse. You must read at least once, twice, three times. And then, as the Lord puts in your heart, whatever, which area, whichever area He needs to deal with you, go to that. And study it until you, it's part of your life. So that you can walk in it, live in it, declare in it, believe in it. You know? So that the devil cannot lie to you. A lot of people perish because of lack of knowledge. Lack of the true revelation knowledge of what God is trying to tell us. I'm still receiving a lot of revelation in this book. It takes me over 20 years. Still much more. Maybe a hundred years more. I still get something. Maybe a thousand years more. God is eternal. He's so big. You cannot put him in a box. This book is just by a little. For him. Okay? Happy? Blessed? Amen. Father, we just thank you for your word, Lord. That the word is true. The word shall not return to your void. And that we wish to declare today, Lord, and we believe in our hearts, Lord, may it come to pass in our lives. I declare the curse be gone in the name of Jesus. I declare the blessing will come on each and every one of us because we are tithers. We have the title's right to every blessing that you have given us in your word. Because your word says so, it is true, it shall not return to your void, it shall prosper, it shall do exactly what the word says, and then we will receive. In Jesus' name, all glory to you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And uh, we're not doing well in the shop. And people say, okay, since you're not doing well and you don't earn much money and you just calculate what you have to pay your gas bill, water bill, electricity bill, blah, blah, then what left over you give the Lord. No, you don't do it that way. You give and God will bless you. So we did, both of us. We don't care how much electricity, water bill we pay. We just, that week, we want to pay 100 or 200, we just give. And God blessed us abundant exceedingly. That day, we opened shop at 5 o'clock. We came at 5 o'clock to open shop until 9. Nobody came into the shop at all. When we opened the till at night to go home, there was $100 extra in the till. Praise God. God is a good God. Like, like my sister here always say, our cup runneth over. Yes, our cup really runneth over because we serve a mighty God. It's up to you whether you want to give or not. But you give, he will bless you. You know, even the Gentiles in Malaysia, those going to the temple, they know it is a covenant. Uh, I, because we are made in the image of God, even though they are, they are Gentiles, they don't know God, but they know in their heart to give. They go to the temple there, they give. They give uh, oil, they give sacks of rice and all that. They know they will get some in return. They will get abundance in return. And true, and this, uh, what do you call this, fishermen and all these uh, vegetable sellers in the marketplace, they give to the Sisters of the Poor. The Sisters of the Poor is an organization where um, these sisters, they take care of old people. In Malaysia, uh, nobody uh, take care of you, your children won't take care of you. You go to this place where the Sisters of the Poor, they have this uh, home where they take care of old people. And they have no money to buy food for them. So every morning, the sisters of the poor will take baskets and go to the marketplace. And these market people, they know the more they give, the more they will get. So they give fish and vegetables and all that, and they are blessed. So, so where does that come from? It comes from the Lord. Though they are not Christians, it comes from the Lord. They know how to bless, and they know they will have blessing in return. That's how it goes. So it doesn't matter what you give, you are giving to the Lord. Okay, don't worry whether the pastor takes the money 
and do whatever he wants. Don't worry about that. You give to God. If the pastor does that, God will judge him. Amen. You want to preach next week? <laughs> she can preach next week. <laughs> That was awesome, wasn't it? We had a duo there. <laughs> uh, well, you know, um, Pastor John was right because my, one of my favourite scriptures is that the Lord loves a cheerful giver, right? Yeah, so, um, so I'm just going to read that scripture again. Right, it's um, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Let each one, it says, let each one give Thoughtfully, I'm reading from the Amplified, and with purpose, for as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver and delights in the one whose heart is in his gift. Now, what's a cheerful giver? What is a cheerful giver? Right, you've determined in your heart what you're giving to the Lord and you give it and then you don't count whatever else you give. Oh, well, I gave my tithes so I can't, I'm not going to give anything else this week. No, if, you, if something comes up and you give a little bit more and something else comes up and, you know, you don't count this is $10 extra, this is $15, I spent 25 on that, you know, so... You know, I've really outdone myself this week. That's not how you think, is it? Hey, do I get some heads nodding here and there, right? Because you can't outgive God. And so you don't think about it. You just think, oh, yeah, well, you know, you don't calculate what you give because the Lord will bless you. And, um, you know, we all have some great testimonies. We wonder how we got, got somewhere sometimes when we didn't have any money, you know? But that's because you can't outgive God. Amen. All right. So I'm going to uh, bring the announcements this week. Now, today is the 23rd of June, right? We all got that? Yep. Now, we had a notice in our, our box uh, yesterday that we picked up and it told us that next Sunday they're going to be doing work in the area and so they're blocking the streets off. So we won't be able to have church next Sunday in the morning but we can have it in the evening. So we'll be having a Sunday service next Sunday in the evening at six o'clock or five o'clock. Sorry? Five o'clock. Okay. I got the hand sign, but five o'clock. So next Sunday at 5 p.m., yeah, we will be having our church service. So because the, the, um, they're, they're using, they're, they're blocked off the roads, they say from 7 a.m. in the morning to 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So... Uh, but anyway, you know, we, we can get over that because we can have just as much time with the Lord at 5 o'clock as we can at 10 o'clock, right? So is that, are you all happy with that? Okay, so if there's anyone here, to, if, you, if you know there's someone missing today and a friend of yours or whatever, just pass it on. We, of course, we'll send out notices, etc., but just pass it on to all those around, those ones that weren't here today, just pass it on and uh, make sure that everybody knows. Okay, so there's no luncheon today, as you probably realise after the service, but um, please join us for a cuppa. Um, we, we still love to have the fellowship. And there's always something to eat. There's bickies and coffee and uh, raisin bread if you want. <laughs> Okay, so that's today for no luncheon. Um, Bible study with Pastor John is on after the service today or after our, our cuppa. So that's in the back room there. If you want to join that, please just let Pastor John know. He's here in the front seat, but just let him know if you want to join the Bible study. And on 
on, um, thir- on um, Wednesday night, we have prayer, which is a conference call. As you, most of you know, we have the conference call, and that is at 7 o'clock. And, something's happening. and we join by telephone at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays, okay, for prayer. So that's an hour of prayer. It's not long. And we pray about the needs of the church. We pray about the people, the nation, etc. Okay, then on Friday we also have a prayer meeting, which is a, a corporate prayer meeting, and it's in the prayer room at the back. We have a prayer room here. And we pray up a storm in the back room, and that is on Friday night. That's, again, one hour from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Then on Saturday... Whoa, we have another prayer meeting, and that's a, a prayer for Israel. And our sister Patricia heads that up, and that again is a prayer conference call. So, if you want to pray for Israel, that you should be praying all the time because the Lord tells us to pray for Israel. But if you want to join with others and pray for Israel, please see Sister Patricia, and she will bring you and join you into her conference call. And then, uh, just for, for some forward notices, okay, I think joining with us today, I didn't ask this, but who is here for the very first time in a church service, has never been here before, who's here for the very first time today? Okay. And I know it's Tatum, Tatum, and your husband's name? Sean. John and Tatum will give them a warm welcome. Thank you for coming. You didn't, no children, no children. And what's the children's names? Luke and Caden. So, okay, so um, that is awesome. We welcome you here. Now, Tatum is part of a ministry, which is actually, Tatum and Sean are part of a ministry, which is actually mentioned on the back of this page, the back page of your newsletter. You don't have a newsletter. There's some more newsletters on the back table. So please take one if you don't have one. So, so, you know, we're pleased to announce, I'll just read you this, that coming up in September, there will be three-day conference held at Reformation Harvest Fire, which is here. And that's on the 12th, 13th and 14th of the month of September. And that's a Thursday, Friday and Saturday evening. So it's 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. approximately. You can't tell with these things. So at, at the what is shown up here, um, that is um, David. That oh sorry, uh, Daniel Adams. That's right. I'll get the name wrong. Yes. Yeah, so that is uh, Daniel Adams who will be leading up the conference. And uh, <laughs> thank you. And he is well known. I've already had some people from. Uh, hearing about it and ringing up about it and uh, wanting to come from places like Western Australia, etc. So uh, this will be on in September, so the 12th, 13th and 14th. So the time will be 6pm to 10pm, as I said, and it will be here. So please look around to see for those that you think that will be interested, people. This is a deliverance ministry and uh, so there's lots of things in our life that we want to uh, work on. And we want to, uh, we need deliverance of. I mean, it mightn't be a big thing, it might be a small thing. But the thing is, there's always things that we can work on in our life. So please, if you think that you've got friends that could benefit from this, please invite them to come along. I can tell you, I've had a deliverance years ago, and it made the big difference in my life. It made an awesome difference in my life. It gave me lots of of understanding things I couldn't understand in scripture before. When I was set free, my mind was set free and I was able to understand and uh, to see things in scripture that I could never see because the enemy had blinded my eyes. But anyway, that's another story. All right, so we'll move on. Oh, by the way, thank you everybody that came for the, uh, the working bee yesterday. We had a working bee. Give yourselves a clap. Can you notice anything different? Have you noticed how great the church looks? 
from the outside, you know, we're still at the same inside, but on the outside, the garden and um, just the front of the church. It was really awesome. So I really want to thank everybody that came. That was really great. They came and they were cheerful. We had a great lunch together. It was really beautiful. And uh, no presents today, but your presence is appreciated. Thank you. All right. So now what we have is, I'm, just, I'm letting you know that the church is, um, supports two missions here. We, first of all, we have the Rescue Sri Lanka, which are these tins. So you can, um, you can give a, um, via one of these tins, which are on the back table there near the door. Now, what happens here is it's, it's just for coins, but you take it home and you just put a little bit in it or a lot in it if you want. But, you know, just have it close by so that you can uh, contribute to this tin. And when it's nice and full and heavy, bring it back. And uh, this, this money in this tin goes to orphanage in Sri Lanka, orphanages in Sri Lanka to help the children. So the children are, are not as well off as our children and they really benefit from these tins. All right, so the other um, ministry that we support is the um, one for, in, uh, for the Philippines. And uh, that is a similar thing. You just uh, bring things that you're not using, like money, <laughs> uh, canned goods, toiletries, used phones, laptops, etc. And not so much clothes, because there's a lot of clothes at the moment, but anything good, anything useful, anything that can be sent to um, the Philippines would be very much appreciated. So um, Pastor Ben heads that up with Sister Estrella, who's, I don't here, you're here, Sister Estrella in the back there. And um, they diligently um, head this up and, and everyone is blessed. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus. 